Voracious eaters have always fascinated and entertained us. From circus sideshows to eating competitions, we never cease to be amazed by the amount of food that can fit into an individual's stomach. But no one in modern times can compare to the 18th century French soldier whose insatiable appetite led him to ingest living animals, inedible objects, and even human flesh. In today's episode of Well I Never, we cover the bizarre and horrifying story of Tarer, the man who would eat anything. Have you ever watched a food eating contest? Nathan's Hot Dogs hosts one each July 4th in New York City. In 2021, champion eater Joey Chestnut broke his own world record by downing an astonishing 75 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. He's won the contest 14 times. Chestnut told reporters he begins training for the competition six months in advance. His training regimen included jaw and throat exercises, practice competitions, and water and lemon juice cleansers. Professional eaters like Chestnut work hard to train their bodies and minds to consume enormous amounts of food. But not every prolific eater in history has needed a strict training regimen to accomplish serious gluttony. In fact, in the late 18th century, a French soldier was such an extraordinary eater, he left medical professionals perplexed. Eating as performance art is nothing new, but in the past, it was undoubtedly more bizarre. Medieval show people consumed stones, spiders, snakes, and other stomach-curdling specimens. A 17th century man named Nicholas Wood earned the moniker the Great Eater of Kent for entertaining fairgoers by consuming 60 eggs, mutton, three large pies, and a black pudding in a single sitting. Likewise, Charles Tile of Dorset ate 133 eggs in an hour alongside a heaped serving of bread and bacon. And according to medical historian Jan Bonderson, a French showman named M. Dufour put away asps in hot oil, dishes of tortoise, bat and mole, and a roast owl in a sauce of glowing brimstone. He finished off with a dessert of toads topped with flies, crickets, spiders and caterpillars. To complete his show in front of a packed Parisian crowd, Dufour swallowed the candles on the table along with a flaming glass of brandy and opened his jaw wide so the audience could gasp at the flickering flames inside his throat. All of these were certainly impressive examples of epicures with no gag reflex and stretched stomachs. But the most extreme and bizarre of all these European epicures was Tarer. Tarer was born near Lyon, France, around 1772. His exact date of birth and even his real name is unrecorded and unknown. As a child, Tarer displayed a puzzlingly enormous appetite. By the time he was a teen, the boy could eat his weight in beef each day. His parents, unable to provide for him, forced him to leave home. Desperate and alone, Tarer joined with a band of thieves, vagabonds and sex workers on a tour of the French provinces, begging for and stealing food. The curious man caught the attention of a traveling charlatan who hired him as a warm-up act for his quackery tour. Therese's job was to draw a crowd by eating corks, stones, and large animals, along with a basket full of apples, one after another. It wasn't a bad gig, but to Therese, it was quite clear he was the reason for the crowds, not the doctor's confidence trick cures. So in 1788, he moved to Paris to become a street performer. By all accounts, his act was successful in drawing crowds, but it certainly wasn't easy on his gullet. During one such show, Therese suffered an acute obstruction of the intestine and had to be carried by his spectators to the Hotel Dieu hospital, where he was treated with laxatives. Ever the showman, Therese offered to demonstrate his talents to the surgeon by swallowing his watch and chain. The surgeon, unamused, promised that if Therese did so, 
he would cut him open and recover his valuables. Therese was immediately recognizable to Parisians. Despite his regular feasting, he was slim and of average height. At the age of 17, he weighed only 100 pounds and was said to have soft hair and kind eyes. The only features that gave a hint to his um, strange talent were his wider than normal mouth, heavily stained teeth, pouchy cheeks, and a saggy, distended stomach that, when empty, could be wrapped around his waist like a belt. When you drew nearer, though, it was apparent something was different about Therese. His body exuded heat. He was always hot to the touch, and he sweated heavily. He had a foul body odor that got worse after eating when his eyes would become bloodshot, his cheeks would bloom red, and vapor would rise visibly from his body, like cartoon stink waves. His stench was described as so horrific in many accounts that people dared not get within 20 paces of him. There are some accounts stating the man suffered from chronic diarrhea of such a horrid smell it could clear pretty instantly, as we can all imagine. But Therese's oddness began and ended with his body. He showed no signs of mental illness or other unusual behaviours, and those who knew him described him as relatively normal, if a bit dull. At the outbreak of the Revolutionary War, Therese joined the French army, but quickly found himself admitted to the hospital at Ulls Oran for extreme exhaustion. There, he was given quadruple rations, but remained hungry. He would scavenge for garbage, eat scraps left by other patients, and sneak into the apothecary's room to eat the poultices. Mystified, the surgeons Dr. Corville and Pierre-Francois Percy ordered him to remain in their care to conduct a series of tests. They watched in amazement as Therese downed a meal designed for 15 laborers, including plates of grease and salt along with four gallons of milk before falling asleep. His belly taut and inflated like a giant balloon. Next, they presented Tara with a live cat. He immediately tore into it with his teeth, drank its blood and ate the entire creature off the bones before vomiting up its fur and skin. Tara would later eat snakes, lizards, eels and puppies as staff looked on. Doctors, they said. Military authorities had begun to press for Therese to be returned to duty, but the doctors couldn't stand to let this appalling and bewildering specimen go. Corville devised a plan to appease both the military leaders and his scientific curiosity. Therese would courier documents within his body. After a test where Therese swallowed a wooden box with a document inside that proved to emerge in good condition, he was officially employed as a spy. His first task was to deliver a message to a French colonel held prisoner in a Prussian fortress. General de Beauharnais was not in doubt of Therese's physical abilities, but questioned the man's mental state. Reluctant to trust him with crucial military information, from the jump, the general wrote a simple note asking that the colonel confirm the message had been received and reply with any helpful information about Prussian troop movements. Boane was right to be careful. Terre was captured nearly immediately, probably because he spoke not a word of German. Or maybe it was the scavenging in the gutter, chasing after small animals to eat or ever-present reeking odor that attracted attention. The glutton endured a strip search and whipping without betraying his mission and was brought before the Prussian commander, General Zogli, before being imprisoned. After 24 hours of captivity and likely many painful hours of hunger, Therese relented and confessed the details of his mission. He was chained to a latrine until the wooden box emerged. Zogli was incensed that the documents contained only a dummy message and performed a mock execution on Therese. After being led to the gallows and a noose placed around his neck, Therese was taken away beaten savagely and released near French lines. His short career as a military spy was over. Terrified and desperate, 
Ferrer returned to the military hospital and begged Dr. Percy to cure his hunger by any means possible. Percy undertook a series of experimental treatments involving laudanum, opiates, wine vinegar, tobacco pills, and large quantities of soft-boiled eggs. His efforts were futile. Terer remained ravenous, sneaking out to butcher shops to scavenge and beg for organ meat. He fought dogs for carrion in the streets and dug through gutters and rubbish heaps in search of things to eat. He was caught several times drinking the blood of other patients who had undergone bloodletting. Several times he even snuck into the hospital mortuary to nibble on the corpses within. Hospital staff lobbied for Terer to be removed to a lunatic asylum but Dr. Percy remained his staunch defender, eager to continue his experiments and devise a cure. But not even Percy was willing to stand up for his prized patient when a toddler went missing within the hospital. As the prime suspect, Terer was chased from the hospital and never returned. Where Terer went after being driven from his refuge at Uz Oran is unknown. But four years later, in 1789, he stumbled into a hospital in Versailles, desperately ill. Dr. Percy was notified of his former patient's sudden reappearance and hurried to see him. Terea told the physician he believed he was suffering from a golden fork he had eaten several years prior, which he thought to be lodged inside him. Percy, however, recognized that Terea was actually in the advanced stages of tuberculosis, and knew that nothing could be done to save his life. A month later, Terer began experiencing continuous diarrhea composed of blood and pus, and he died shortly after that. His body began to rot at an alarming rate, but Versailles' chief surgeon, M. Tessier, could not resist conducting an autopsy on the strange corpse. He discovered that Therese's gullet was unusually wide. When the jaw was opened, he could see directly down into the stomach, which was covered in ulcers and filled nearly his entire abdominal cavity. The liver and gallbladder were likewise unusually large. According to the London Medical and Physical Journal, the stench of the body was so insupportable that M. Tessier, chief surgeon of the hospital, could not carry his investigation to any further extent. Alas, the golden fork was never discovered. There has never again been a modern case quite like Therese. And while there is a more recent diagnosis of polyphagia to account for people with insatiable eating habits, none who felt a hunger to the extreme of Terer, who was willing to consume literally anything to appease his appetite. There are a few modern theories about Terer's unique condition. Doctors suspect he likely had an enlarged hypothalamus, the gland responsible for regulating the body's temperature and causing the sensation of hunger. It's also possible this was coupled with a case of pica, which causes the eating of non-edible objects. A parasite is one other possible explanation as to why Terea never put on weight. A hookworm or roundworm may have been helping to consume those massive portions. Hypothyroidism, Prader-Willi syndrome, extreme iron deficiency and a damaged amygdala are also contenders for causes of the man's bizarre and voracious appetite. And strangest of all, in the same time and area, a man named Charles Domery, a Polish soldier serving in the French army, was eating 10 times the rations of the British soldiers he had been captured by. He would also eat whatever he could get his hands on, with it being said that he ate nearly 200 cats in a year. And if no other food was available, he would eat up to five pounds of grass a day. There's even a story that states while on a ship he tried to eat the severed leg of a crew member who had been hit by cannon fire. Like Terea, he was studied extensively with no conclusions. Is it possible that two men were suffering due to a common environmental cause? 
The answers to that are lost to the sands of time and the decay of the flesh. While those with cats, puppies or even small children who encountered Terrell labelled him something of a monster, Terrell always preferred to eat good food cooked for humans and was merely a victim of his voracious hunger. One can only hope Terrell's appetite has finally been satiated in the afterlife. Do you have someone in your family or perhaps one of your friends that has a hunger that rivals Therese? Let us know in the comments below. Right then, take care and I'll see you next time with another story to make you say, well, I never.